Does the architecture school that you attend really matter? Does it make a difference for your career? Does it help you find a job more easily? What are the advantages and disadvantages of attending an Ivy League school? Well, I don't think it really matters, but there are some advantages which I will break down in this video and why it does matter and why it doesn't matter. So if you're interested, let's get started. I think that the school that you attend does not matter, but I think that we should also acknowledge that attending an Ivy League school and having that label of attending Yale or Harvard, that that doesn't have some unfair advantages because it does. But in the long run, does it really make a difference? No, I don't think so. And I've seen this throughout my career and I wanna share my thoughts on this question because I have been getting these questions a lot. And I remember when I was looking into architecture schools, for my undergrad, I felt I didn't really have too many options. Once I was looking into my master's degree, I did spend some time thinking about this question. I thought it was important to attend a really good school because there were some advantages. But now that I've been through that process, I didn't attend an Ivy League school, but I did end up choosing to go to a local school within Canada because of the cost. The cost to attend Ivy League school, unless you're getting a full scholarship, then it's not really worth it in my experience. So if you're able to get a full scholarship, scholarship, I would say go for it because you have a lot of resources there. You're going to make a lot of connections and that's what I think the power of going to an Ivy League school is. And of course, you're going to have great professors. I really do feel that the school that you attend doesn't define you. There are great examples of many architects that are even self-taught, like Ando, a Japanese architect. I love his work. He's a great inspiration and he was self-taught. And then there are other architects like Norman Foster that attended for their masters, they went to Yale University. However, their undergrad, they went to a local university. I believe it was Manchester. Yeah, so he attended and studied the School of Architecture and City Planning at the University of Manchester. And then he was able to get the Henry Fellowship and he was able to attend Yale University, but it came with a scholarship. So in that case, then it's worth it because the exposure and the connections you gain are really, I think, worthwhile. But if you're not able to attend an Ivy League school, I wouldn't worry about it because it doesn't define you. There are so many other architects like Renzo Piano, top earning architects in the industry with notable works that have not gone to any Ivy League school, that have gone to polytechnical schools and just local schools within their region. And there's nothing wrong about it. I think what it comes down to is your skills and talent. I think, of course, if you're talented and you're able to also go to a great school, then that gives you an unfair advantage. However, it's what you make out of that experience. I know so many people that attend architecture school at these Ivy League schools. That doesn't mean that they're gonna be the best architect. It doesn't automatically mean that. Yes, you're exposed to great resources and you have a lot of connections, but it's also about your inner self, your talent, and what you do with the information available. I don't want you to think that if you don't go to, into debt and if you don't go to an Ivy League school, your career is doomed because that's not necessarily true. You can go to a good local architecture school program and do really well and really learn and push yourself. And it's about what you make out of that program and what you learn out of the program and how you apply that knowledge and that will then push you forward. Now, in terms of finding a job, going to an Ivy League school might help your resume a little bit because it does have some weight to it when you do read Harvard or Yale. But, and I'm saying a huge but here, but it really then depends. You may get your foot into a place to find work, 
But then you have to hold yourself. You need to be able to bring value and deliver on the projects that you're working on. And I've seen this with a few people in the industry that they have these a great resume, they've been to great schools, but then they do struggle in the industry. So I want you to remember that when you're practicing architecture, it's more about what you can deliver and do. And it's about your technical knowledge, knowing your softwares and all of that stuff and how you apply that knowledge knowledge versus having that academic label on your resume. And that's where it doesn't really matter where you go to school. And it really comes down to your abilities. So in the end, I really feel like it comes down to your talent and to your abilities, how you use that information, how you use that education moving forward into your career as an architect. I feel like, yes, if you go to a really good school, you're gonna be exposed to more elements, but that doesn't mean you can't do that by going to any other school. It's all about your talent because in the end, architecture is an art. And so if you're able to really apply yourself and take that knowledge moving forward, I think you will be fine. And you don't need to go to an, an Ivy League school to become an architect or to be a successful architect for that matter in the field. If you enjoyed this video, you're really gonna enjoy this video as well. And if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and you can do that here. I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, bye.